Welcome Survivor! If you are playing multiplayer, a 7 days to die server is often the way to go. For ad hoc, occasional on and off sessions, a local dedicated server often suffices. But for a 24-7 world, a hosted server of some sort works much better. It means you can install it, you can run it and your own computer does not need to always be turned on for the server to work. This video will show how easy and powerful it is to run a 7 day style server and actually as a matter of fact a whole bunch of other game servers will get to that on a VPS service like Hostinger. Newly launched this year I've had the great pleasure to work with them to improve their services and I'm glad to be able to bring this to you. And no this is not a sponsored video paid for by anyone. I do it because I believe in the service and I actually use it for community servers right now. We're going to start with first how easy it is to set up and install the 7 days to die game server, configuring it and connecting to it. This is the fun part. The second half of the video will walk you through the steps of how to sign up for this hosted VPS game service, which is easy as well. But to set your mind at ease, no this is not an expensive service that few can afford. As a quick guide. Game Panel 1 might be great for running a small server like Minecraft or a limited 7 days to die server. The more popular and recommended for 7 days to die would be Game Panel 2 which is equivalent to what most game service providers would offer. Game Panel 4 and 8 respectively are with even higher specification. You can see a lot more RAM and more CPUs and would be great for running higher tier modded 7 days to die servers due to much more RAM and more CPUs. And before I forget, these prices are before the temps and discount from a discount code that I will provide you as well. So it's actually even cheaper than you see here. First step is to log in. Don't worry about how to get to your login page. I will go through that in the VPS setup. And these are my servers that I'm running. And to tie back to the game panel choices, I'm running multiple servers on a game panel 8 with any of the services but increasingly with the higher game panels you have sufficient resources to run multiple servers at the same time. For instance on my game panel 8 I'm running an Icarus server, Enshrouded, a 7 days to die, the front server and I still have enough space for a Ark Survival Evolved and actually I could run another one because I have more resources available. For $20 a month I dare you to find another game service provider matching this. Each of these instances, so let's call it a box because that's effectively what it is. It's a box and inside we have the game server running. And we're going to create another one with create instance. We're going to select 7 days to die and we're of course going to name it. It doesn't say sound good. And after creation we're just going to do nothing. We're going to leave this ticked in start instance on boot meaning that when the service is restarted which might happen then it will restart this box in the game server as well and create instance. You'll see it's creating the instance that doesn't necessarily mean that it's setting everything up but it's creating that box and within that we're then going to install the game server. And now that we have this instance, of course it's not started, we're going to click manage here and manage and we'll actually go into that box and get everything set up. And this is the landing page and here you'll be able to see the CPU usage, the memory usage and active users when it's actually running. The first thing we want to do is click update because we want to install 7 days to die into this game instance. This will take a while, it does have to go to Steam, download the server and then install it. So get yourself a coffee. 7 days to die has now been installed. Let's go about configuring. We're going to go to configuration here on the left side and gameplay settings. This is where the majority of actual gameplay changing settings are. You can change the game world. If you want to have a random world you put in RWG. You can change your game name, the game difficulty, the blood moon frequency or their movement speed. If you're not sure what you're doing, just leave them at the default for now. We're then going to go to the actual server settings. And this is where you set the actual name, the description, the password which you probably want to have unless you're having an open server. Just set it to whatever you want to have. The things like how many maximum players are there going to be, the server visibility. And an important file is a server admin.xml that I'm going to show you in a moment where you put in yourself as a server admin. I'm going to go back to instances and we're going to start it so that the game server will generate the server admin.xml upon starting the first time. Then we go to file manager, we go to user, 
Go down to saves and we'll see the server admin.xml. Click here on the dot 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 and edit. What you want to do is scroll down a little bit and to add yourself as an admin, you have to remove these comment strips that you are seeing at the front and the back and you have to put in your user ID. This is just Steam 64 ID that you can get at a place like the Steam ID finder or something. If you've done this before, you already know what it is and then save the file and you'll made yourself admin. But everything should be up and running. We're looking for the connection info here at the bottom. It's going to be an IP and port after this primary endpoint. Of course, I blurred it out because it's my server. Simply copy it and get into the game. We're going to join a game and then connect to IP. Here you need to put in the IP and the port that you copied in and then hit connect. And that loads us into our new server that we just set up. As you can see, we're in. We're playing. It's already up and running with a minimum amount of fuss. And I'm going to run you through how to sign up for VPS and get that all up as well. And I'm going to go through some of the great benefits provided. Yes, I do know that part is a bit dry, but I did put it last and I will give you a step by step guide of how to get through that. Let's look at how to get your own VPS. First, follow the link in the description. It's hostringer.com slash 42 Also, remind yourself to not forget the discount code entry at order to claim that 10% discount. Important! Let's start with the basics. What are we renting and why Hostinger? Without going into excruciating, boring details, normally when providers offer game service hosting, they basically have you run your game server lumped together with a bunch of other game servers. Everyone shares their resources, even though you have sort of a limit to it. And if the service is heavily utilized, your game server can slow down as well. Hosting your office was called a VPS. It's a virtual private server. Basically, a dedicated assigned virtual server with specified resources that are used by you and only you. On top of this VPS, the specific game servers is then installed and managed in that very easy to use website that I showed off. There are of course security provisions such as a malware scanner and a built-in firewall, DDoS protection. Of course, you need that to protect yourself from cyber threats. Hostinger also has excellent reviews across multiple review sites, as you can see, from Trustpilot to Google, Host Advice, and WP Beginner. As a global provider, they have servers in many countries, from North and South America to Europe and Asia, giving you the option of where to host your game server. Even better, they offer an unprecedented 30-day money-back guarantee. Other major game service providers offer a standard of 48 to 72 hour money-back guarantee normally. So this should set your mind at ease that they do provide a high-quality server. Now the first thing to do is pick your game server hosting plan. And this is where you have to think about what are you trying to run. If you're only trying to run a small server, a game panel 2 is probably a good choice. If you're looking at having two, three or maybe more servers, such as you are migrating for another service provider, consider 4 or 8 because that gives you a lot more RAM and more vCPUs. If you're running a heavily modded game server as well, you might want to make sure you have a higher level game panel as well because you do need that extra RAM and CPU normally. We're going to choose game panel 2 because it is the most popular and for a regular normal game server, this should be sufficient. Next thing to choose is do you want to pay on a monthly basis, 12 monthly or 24 month. And you'll see the pricing is of course going to be different as well, including how much you're going to be saving. Also remember the price is before the 10% discount code is applied that I will give you later on. I would suggest going for at least a 12 or possibly 24 month because it means that you have the lowest available price for the longest available time because it does renew at a slightly higher price as well. You might think to yourself that I'm not sure whether I'm going to be running my particular game server for more than one year. Another thing to consider is that you can actually install another game server. So if you started with, let's say, seven days to die, you can switch after three months to an ARC server. Then you change to an Enshrouder server. Then you change to something else. Or maybe you run two or three at the same time. Let's choose 12 months here. You will need to create an account or log in or just log in with Google. Fill out what you want on the order page and of course your payment, which can be credit card, PayPal, Google Pay, Alipay or CoinGate. Then we're going to click on coupon code. 
Type in Valuey Photo 2 and hit Apply. And we'll see the price has now gone down by another 10%. If we go up to the different plans, you'll see it's now even cheaper than the $9.99 that it was originally. So do make sure you type in the coupon to save yourself some money. Then submit the secure payment and make payment. The first thing to do will be to set up the virtual private server. This can pop up immediately or if you log in separately, follow the steps, get to the home page and there will be an account action and you click setup. The key part to getting the VPS is to choose the location. We're going to choose United States. Continue. You have to put in a password. It will tell you that we're going to set up in United States. It'll be Devin 11 and this is the host name and you click finish setup. The system will now get your VPS running in the background. So grab yourself some coffee and come back. Once we've gotten the VPS set up, we're now on the Hostinger H panel and you click manage on your VPS and it's going to be under home here. This gives you an overview of your VPS. We're going to go to panel access and simply click the login URL, which will bring you to the web page where we install the game services. And wasn't that easy? I have now walked you through how to navigate to hostinger.com slash 42 and get your own rented virtual private server and installing the game server on it and configuring it ready for gameplay. I've left the link to this in this description of the video and make sure you use that video for the two discount code to save those 10% even better value. I hope you've enjoyed this guide. Why not share it with others who are also looking to set up a game server and help them as well. See you in the next video friends.